yes, how are you doing? Welcome back. I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be fitting new A panels on the Racing Green. But a couple of bits first. Firstly, thank you very much. So one of the subscribers to the channel, uh, Brian Hedrington, apologies if I got your surname wrong. I think that's what it is. Um, I've mentioned on previous videos that you can never have enough mold grips. I kept forgetting to order them. Uh, but Brian sent me some bodywork mold grips, which are going to come in very, very handy. So thank you very much, Brian. I really appreciate it. They'll come in very useful. Uh, also, last weekend was the London to Brighton mini run. So I've done the London to Brighton in Piau. I've done the London to Brighton many times before. Uh, how many? Oh, I could have a look actually. So... 1998, 2000, 2009, 2010, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I'm 23, I've probably missed a few plaques off there, but I've done the London to Brighton lots and lots of times. Um, and prior to doing, I think 1998 was probably the first time I actually done the run, but I used to go down there every year from probably 1991 when I first learnt to drive. Um, but first run was 1998. Really enjoyed it, fantastic run. It makes it all the better when the weather is nice. So the weather was good um, and I didn't camp over and I didn't stay. So now the London to Brighton's changed. It always used to be Crystal Palace to Brighton and that was sort of the run that everyone was used to. But because of the ULES changes and, and just they couldn't get Crystal Palace anymore. I don't think it's now in Cheam. So it's Cheam to Brighton. Uh, but you can kind of take the old A23 route if you want. So this was the first time I've done it actually from Cheam. I didn't camp over this year. I've done it lots of times before, but in all honesty, I'm just getting a bit old for camping now. Um, all that staying up till one, two o'clock in the morning. Alan, Alan, Steve, Steve, lots of noise, all that sort of thing. I've done all of that before. And uh, yeah, getting up at half past four, five o'clock in the morning, people revving engines to get lined up. It's beyond me a little bit. Maybe I'm getting a bit old. Um, so I actually drove up in the morning. So I don't live that far away from Cheam. I'm about 50 minutes, 55 minutes away. So I left in the morning at sort of half past five, quarter to six. I got up there, I was in Cheam for just before seven o'clock and I was in the last row. <laughs> So that meant I didn't get out of Cheam. I didn't get out the sort of parking area, the queues, until 22, quarter to 11. I took a very nice, leisurely drive down to Brighton, down the old A23 route. Really enjoyed it, actually. I was in no rush to get there. No rush to get down to Brighton and sit in traffic. So it was quite leisurely. I actually dropped and picked up my, stopped and picked up my wife on the way from home. And we went down there, actually got on Madeira Drive, probably wasn't own, wasn't till about two o'clock in the afternoon. And quite honestly, it was quite disappointing. A lot of people had started to go home by then. Um, it's not what it used to be. I remember going down to the London to Brighton in 91, 92. It was huge. There was loads of traders. There was events going on in the middle of Madeira, Madeira Drive. There were celebrities down there. This was back in the day that John Cooper was still alive and you'd have the local dealerships like Caffins putting things on. But yeah, it's just kind of toned down a bit over the years and I'm sure I got down there too. I didn't see many club stands left or anything like that. It's still a fantastic event, don't get me wrong. It's uh, the highlight of the year and if you've never done it, you must do the London to Brighton if you can. It is a fantastic run. Um, but for me, it's just kind of not what it used to be. But let me know, what did you think about it? If you'd done the London to Brighton, did you see PL? And uh, yeah, what did you think of it? So anyway, let's get into this week's video and let's get the A panels put on the racing green.
right now we're going to have a go at fitting the A panels but there's quite a lot going on with the A panels you've got a previous experience you've got to trim them up quite a lot so top corner here typically needs trimming um, obviously and we probably need to trim down here as well because uh, there's too much metal there And then obviously you need to, once it's fitted, fold the edge. We need to clean this off, get some weld through primer on there as well. So yeah, that's not going in and up at the top and it's way too far in at the bottom there. So let's get the grinder out and uh, start grinding to shape. We've got a much more consistent gap down the side there now, which should help with fitment. Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? So yeah, fitting an A panel, it's not as simple. It's a little bit fiddly, but we'll go through it. Doesn't take too long to do, to be honest. You'll have seen me there. Obviously, you've got to fold over the edge, the back edge where it meets with the door. It starts out being a right angle, but it's always helpful if you can just to pre-fold it a little bit maybe by about 30 degrees which is what I've done there it just makes it when you come to folding the edge over with the the folding tool which is you can buy them from frost restoration it just makes it a lot better and in fact when I folded the edge on project sprout I hadn't pre-folded it first and what I ended up doing was marking the a panel so I kind of learnt from my mistakes there and of course we're going to be doing some spot welding so just cleaning off and preparing the mating surfaces there and just putting a bit of weld through primer on flashing off with a heat gun so we don't have to wait around too long Thanks there to all the channel supporters who've supported the channel through Buy Me A Beer. There's a link in the description if you would like to support the channel. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Removing the heritage sticker there. Bit of brake cleaner on. Let it soak in a little bit and they peel off quite nicely.
so there we go we're ready pretty much to spot weld it on now like i say just a bit of pre-folding on the edge facing the door make sure the door opens and closes still okay and you've got enough gap there if you put it too tight the door will obviously catch on the a panel and then i'm using mark spot welder here because it's got the angled prongs on the end which just makes it easier to get in when you're trying to spot weld the flange with a flat edge it's a bit of paint at the bottom of the edge there which i've just got to clean off with a bit of sandpaper couldn't get the strip and clean disc in there there we go and now top of the a panel that is seam welded so i need to get the mig welder out I did struggle a little bit up there. The metal's not fantastic. A little bit of corrosion up there and it did blow through in a couple of places. And now I'm just welding under the bonnet there. That is just where I've spot welded through on that front panel. And sometimes when you spot weld and you spot weld for too long because the spot welder has a timer on it, it actually burns through the metal so I'm just filling up the holes there now I've taken the door off now so I can fold that edge properly I did struggle to get the door off actually because the the fold where the back of the a panel meets up against the door actually gets in the way of the hinges when you're trying to take the door back off again so there we go. I've got the panel folding tool there. It's available from Frost Restoration. And it just gives you a nice, neat fold. You need to go along and just do it bit by bit. If you try and rush it, you can damage the outside of the panel. Got my finger file there cleaning up the weld. It has come in quite handy, that finger file. It, it's not brilliant for all jobs, but there's certain jobs where it does come in quite handy. And final, finally, a bit of a epoxy primer on there, stop it corroding. Then lastly, what we need to do is get that door back on, bolt it in place and just check our panel gaps. So there we go, A panel fitted. You always have to do a bit of dicking around with a A panel. Um, generally trimming at the top and the bottom. But um, yeah, that's fitted all right. I'm pretty pleased with my gaps down here. The door opens and closes okay. It, I can just hear it just starting to catch there. Um, but this door, it's going to have a new skin on it anyway and once the door's off again we can just tap in a little bit there what tends to happen is when you f you line it all up and then you fold it over and it makes the gap smaller when you fold it over because obviously the metal squeezes out a little bit so you really want to start out with a slightly too big gap um, and then as you um, as you fold it over it should come back in at the top here we're a little bit close but like i say 
this will get fine tuned once the once the new door skin is on as well and i've just gone over it with a very quick blast of epoxy primer just to uh, protect uh, up inside there as well everywhere where there's bare metal where it's been welded um, now i'm going to get i'm going to turn the whole car around to get on and do the other side i won't time lapse that i'll just uh fast forward and hey presto we should be done in the blink of an eye and there we go there's the other side done um pretty much the same little bit of fettling here and there uh but again gaps are good in fact this side the gap's probably a little bit bigger um but like i say we're going to be reskinning the doors it's got shims on the doors so i can probably narrow down the gap if i need to um and no catching on this side which is good um yeah happy days that is the front end all fully done now and yeah anywhere i've welded i've just gone over in epoxy primer just to give it a bit of protection good day good day's work on the mini